Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. We're going to discuss three reasons why silver should, that's the key word, folks, should rise soon. Let's explore. Oh, you've heard the old adage, prices are low, silver's on sale, buy now. Yeah, we've heard that before. We heard that when silver was at $21 an ounce. We've heard that when silver was at $20 an ounce. And as of the recording of this video, it got a pretty big smackdown into the mid $18 range. So when will it end? Well, no one really knows. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have one that's made of glass. And uh, I don't have it here to show you. But nonetheless, the thing is that we all make predictions. Uh, we all certainly speculate on the markets. It's only natural to do that. And in times when the market is doing what it's doing now, kind of going round and round, and, uh, and, and it's heading in a downwards direction as it goes down and around. Uh, and I'll just give you an example of what that looks like. There's this going down and around instead of just going round and around. And the markets are just, uh, they're, it's very speculative. It always is uh, when it comes to uh, the markets of commodities. And as I said in a recent video, I don't care what it is, there's nothing that is immune from volatility these days. Uh, everybody's trying to make sense of these markets and what's happening here. Um, but just as is, there is the variety of silver that you see on your screen right now. There is that much variety of different opinions about where silver is going to go, where it should go, and even where it is going. Uh, the thing is, is one thing we know for sure is that to expect the unexpected when it comes to precious metals, as is the case with any other commodity, and which is why you really must think about silver as a long-term um, store of value. Um, you have to, one of the, it's one of those things where you buy it and then you forget about it. Forgetting about it in terms of, uh, you know, where it lies within your uh, portfolio as to um, liquidity. You don't want it to be as liquid as, let's say, cash is. Cash is a very liquid entity. Um, why is that? Because the government said so. It's, that's what fiat is, Right. Now, you see the name on the top of this note, Federal Reserve Note, that essentially just means that this private institution that is really backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government um, is kind of the issue or the arbiter of this bank note that is losing value now at a rate over 9% um, year over year. Uh, it's a losing proposition at this point for both the dollar and right now, same thing with silver. But I want to give a little hope here, but that hope really is something that we should have no matter what the price is for silver. Why? Because we look at it in terms of its value. How do you measure value when the price is so volatile? It's difficult. And I think the one way to do it is to think about this coin right here. That's a Franklin half dollar. It used to circulate. Um, um, and uh, it was made of silver. Why? Because silver had intrinsic historic value over thousands of years. Uh, right now, that, that historic value um, is falling, kind of a, is, is, is being challenged by the conventional wisdom uh, that we are um, in in the last really decade or so with a wider than normal gold to silver ratio. Silver has a dual purpose and a dual role. It's lack of industrial demand is one reason why it's down. Um, and it is being uh, essentially being affected by inflation um, and or the possibility of a recession if we're not already in one. Um, in recession, in inflation is meaning that people are nervous and they want to they're saving their dollars and they're 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 recoiling back to the dollar um, and as measured by a, of other currencies around the world especially the sixth by the IMF, the dollar is strong. That's going to push down on both precious metals, but especially silver. Uh, that in tandem with the industrial use. But I'm going to talk about 
three reasons why uh, silver could rise soon. And one of them is the gold to silver ratio, as I mentioned before. And the shift gold has a, a piece on this. I don't agree with everything they, they talk about here, but, you know, uh, as is usually the case, uh, things that dramatically go down typically will go back up again. But what does that up mean? We'll talk about that here momentarily. So the first reason is that the gold to silver ratio is at a two-year high. Uh, and uh, that is something that is quite uh, remarkable to see that we're, uh, over the past couple of months here, we've seen it grow and grow and grow. In fact, right now, as I record this video, it's almost 93 to 1. And um, so it takes 93 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. And the ratio fell to 30 to 1 in 2011 and below 20 to 1 in 1979 into 1980. Uh, but those were anomalies. And most of the time, it's been um, averaging about 60 to 65 to 1. Uh, but historically, as the spread gets this wide, silver doesn't just outperform gold. It goes on a massive run in a short period of time. Since January 2000, this has happened four times. And you can see it just kind of whipshaw uh, back into, into the uh, uh, bullwhip. Think of it as a bullwhip, and it just snaps back. And that's kind of a, has, has what has happened in the past. Uh, now, as I've, you've heard me say before, history may not completely repeat, but often it rhymes. And we see that uh, many cases when the Fed in July of 2007, before the financial crisis got going, the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates. Uh, with the two starting points of July 2007 and July 2020, the overlap is very close early on as to what happened there. Very, very close if you look at it in our graph. And uh, we saw what happened two, two and a half years later in 2011 in silver. Now, Shift Gold is making a an assessment that if history repeats, we could be less than six months away from an explosive move higher. But it often doesn't repeat. You know, that's the thing. It may rhyme. In other words, what happened in 2011 was an anomaly. And it only happened for a very short period of time. For all, for all intents and purposes, it really should not be considered. But often people don't care about that. They just see the number of the all-time high for silver. Think, we, it's got to get back there again. In fact, I remember very distinctly during that time thinking to myself, uh, you know, I was kind of misled too, thinking, ooh, it's $50. It went down to 45 It's going down to 42 Oh, this has got to be the low. i got to stack on because it's only going to go up from here because it had climbed for so, uh, for so long of a period of time, and then it reached that pinnacle, and then it started going back down, and it rose back up again, and then it went back down and kind of seesawed its way back down, many of us feeling that we had seen the bottom. And... And in a sense, I told myself, I'm not going to fall in that trap again. Yea, though, when I made my big silver bar purchases uh, fairly recently, I, in a sense, did fall in that trap, uh, thinking in retrospective, because I thought I had bought at near the low, if not the low, thinking that I don't think silver is going to go below $20 an ounce. Well, look at that. I was wrong. It did fall. In fact, I think it probably could continue to fall more. Now, not knowing where the markets are going to go from one uh, day to the next or even one minute to the next, it's quite possible you watch this video and we could see silver start to climb back the other way and recover all of its losses. But do not um, get too excited about that because the volatility is something that is not to be ignored at this point and we should take it into account. Timing these buys is something that nobody's going to be able to do accurately, consistently. You have to be committed to your purchases and hang on to your purchases. The silver that you see here, some of it was purchased quite a long ways of time ago. Other of, others of it um, very, very recently um, at different price points, but it's all the same silver. And so that is something to take into account. Do not look for that moonshot. It likely will not come. Look for silver to normalize against gold and against other commodities um, and as a monetary metal as well. Normalization of the price is something to consider. Is silver on sale now? Yes, it is. Uh, based off of their second point here, 
about history, look forward to rhyme, but sometimes the words that rhyme don't necessarily have the same letters in them either to make up that rhyme. The vowels may not always uh, match up exactly uh, or the consonants in, uh, in many cases. Keep that in mind too. The third reason is definitely something that does make sense as to what is going to happen with the Federal Reserve and, uh, and what they're doing to try to fight inflation. Uh, because it's reached uh, an unexpectedly high levels yet again. It seems to be the the transition we've taken from inflation being tran transitory to inflation is going to be temporary to unexpected to to now it, we are teetering closer and closer to runaway inflation. I'm very reluctant to use the term hyperinflation uh, like we're seeing like in Turkey right now, but nonetheless uh, we are seeing the prices of things go up everywhere, and it's going to get worse no matter what. In fact, uh, you may see the numbers go down next month um, as measure against the, the month uh, prior, a year earlier. But think about it, a year, a year earlier in the, in the previous month of July, that's when things were really, really starting to pick up a bit. So and it could be that, or it could be August where we see the inflation go down year over year. Uh, but do not be fooled by that. Do the math. Compare it from a year ago. What was inflation like then from the year prior to that? That is the true measure. But you think about it. The Federal Reserve, they essentially um, target inflation uh, every time they meet. That's their thing. They know the dollar is losing value. They target it around 2%. So we have just seen it in a higher pace at a higher rate these days. In fact, there is a time, in fact, likely when they do the numbers again, we will see it at more than 1% a month, um, um, you know, for that inflation. So, right, so if the Fed can't, it can talk tough, but it can't actually fight inflation. For, in, in reality, the central bank simply can't raise rates high enough to get ahead of the inflation curve. And that's just it. What would have to be right now? 9%, 9.1%. Are they going to raise it to 9%? No, they're not going to do that. Rate hikes will inevitably inflict major damage on the economy and drive us into a recession, a recession if it hasn't done so already. In fact, uh, we are literally a, a, a week or so away from a, um, another rate hike announcement. Um, rising interest rates are already causing problems for government buried in debt. In the past year, the federal government's annual interest cost has increased from $323 billion to $423 billion. That's just an interest. More concerning, the impacts of the recent 75 basis uh, rate, ho uh, rate hike in the upcoming uh, 75 basis points or even 100 basis points rate hike are not even registering yet uh, for the annualized interest owed on debt, the Federal Reserve. It's just climbing. It's dangerous for the U.S. Treasury. Interest costs will soon blow past $500 billion and then continue racing ahead. Can the Fed sit by and watch this happen? No. Now, I do question that to see if how much does it really matter. Does the debt really matter? It seems like, uh, you know, you and I, the people that watch this channel that keep up with these things, we understand it's a bad thing to have thirty one, almost $31 trillion in debt and deficit spending like like it's going out of style. I mean, and this money printing that's happening and spending, um, it's insane. But, you know, how much more can we do it? I think we can go and do it as long as people have faith in the dollar. As long as they have faith in the dollar, as long as that dollar is strong, uh, there's no threat to the debt, to the interest load on the debt, or what have you. And I think probably what they are saying here, and this third reason why silver should rise soon, is that the, the more we pay in just interest costs, the less faith that other nations will have and be able to pay our debts, which means a dollar is just propped up by a government institution that's doing what we're doing, said other countries, except um, at an even greater pace. And that's probably why it is. This is why the central bank will almost certainly reverse course sooner than anyone thinks. This is not something that plays out over 12 to 24 months. The impact is being seen now and will get stronger with each and every month. In other words, we could see an about face 
And what will that about face look like in terms of what the Fed does and what gold and silver does? I caution you to think that that just because this happens and they stop raising rates, that uh, that um, uh, the, the dollar is going to uh, just automatically crash and that gold and silver are going to go to the moon. Do not fall into that trap. But I think we will see a an increased rise in interest in precious metals, um, and both in the ETF futures and also in the physical. And you will start to see the prices climb up uh, fairly steady and dramatically. And that dramatic move upward does not mean $50 an ounce, by the way. I'm talking about just recapturing the losses that we saw um, uh, you know, over the past year or so, and maybe even heading up a little bit more. In other words, where my original prediction for this year, with prices where they are now, as I record this video, it's about $18 and, and uh, 30 some odd cents. Um, actually, it's $18 and 50 cents. And uh, I still think there is a path to $29 silver by the end of the year. Do not hold me to that. Do not make any purchases based off of that prediction. I could be totally wrong. But I do believe in this theory that the, that the, uh, that the Federal Reserve is uh, likely going to run into a decision point, a fork in the road. And uh, so that is where we are at and could come sooner than later, likely not over, some, not something, this is something that's going to have to come to a head within the next months, not years. Uh, so we'll see how it happens. So the fundamental backdrop has never been stronger. The underlying data suggests that the snapback will come back soon and potentially play out quickly. And so it is, an, it is a time to think about considering purchasing if you feel this way about it. And this is why I say these are reasons why it should rise soon, but not necessarily that it will. I'm cautiously optimistic for silver in the uh, short to medium term, believe it or not. Uh, for those of you who think that I'm not Ben, uh, well, this hope this video serves. In the end, over the long course of time, uh, the, the calculus does not change for silver. Uh, I believe it will preserve your wealth if you buy it right and buy it smart and hold on to it uh, long enough in order to get those uh, wealth preservation uh, attributes out of it. I hope you found this video insightful. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.